Now we have a, a local entrepreneur from Berlin. As a matter of fact, if you start counting how many clean tech startups do we have in Berlin, I think you, you come up uh, to 15 or something. And this man is called Peter Boots. You are actually a Dutch fellow from the Netherlands who is quite happy in Berlin. And you are doing uh, incredible stuff with a low or um, a near surface uh, geothermal energy. And here's your clicker. And here's uh, your stage. Okay. Welcome to EcoSummit. Thank you very much, Jan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here and giving me the opportunity to talk about the exciting new developments at GON. Um, my name is Peter Botts. I am co-founder and um, also investor and co-manager of GON Energy Technologies. And at GON Energy Technologies, we want to make renewable energy happen now. Uh, what GON is doing is um, making renewable energy for heating and cooling buildings. And as you all know, renewable uh, the heating and cooling demands of buildings form a major part of our everyday energy consumption. Of course, there are other renewable energies available for this uh, task. But if you look, for instance, at solar thermal energy, it's a very good energy, but it has its limitations. And some of the limitations are that it's available when you don't need it, and when you need it, it's not available. Of course, you can do a little bit of storage, but it's not nearly enough to work. Then we have air heat pumps, we have biomass, we all know it, but they all have their issues, especially when cooling and when storing energy. If we look at geothermal energy, then we see that geothermal energy does not have these problems. Because geothermal energy can be stored, it's all year available, and it can do cooling. But of course, there is always something. And geothermal energy is a little bit awkward because it normally needs a lot of space. That is where we come in. GUN has developed a technology which is very compact. And that makes it very suitable for use in cities because of its high power and its low space utilization, it's very well suited for cities. Of course, if you look at a city like Berlin, you will see that it's a very dense cityscape, typically many buildings and limited space for energy storage, especially when you consider seasonal energy storage, where you would need quite a lot of volume. But seen from the Earth perspective, Berlin is rather small. And a huge storage potential is available underneath the city, as you can see here. For today, we will call it smart green energy storage. It works like this. The storage principle works as follows. In the summer, when there is excess heat, we cool buildings, and this excess heat of the building is stored into the earth. In the winter, we reverse this, and the UN system extracts the heat from the earth to heat the buildings. Some of our key technologies are our GeoN storage module and our energy flow control unit, which controls the whole system. An application overview you can see here on the right. For instance, you see here a typical inner city apartment building with many apartments. There you typically have hardly any space. And there we can build one drill hole under the building. Typically, a drill hole is like between 40 and 60 centimeters in diameter and roughly between 50 and 200 meters depth. In this drill hole, we will build our system. And um, normally, there should have been a little film here showing how it works, but somehow um, it doesn't work. And Jan permitted me to have one more minute of speaking time. Um, what would happen in our system is that it circulates water in the ground. And it circulates natural groundwater. And this natural groundwater has a certain temperature. In the winter, the groundwater will be used to, dis to extract heat from the Earth. And in the summer, we would do the reverse. And then the cycle starts again in the next year, and next year, and next year. And so we have very renewable energy here. Um, why would you buy a GON system? Well, we have lots of green customers. But they're not just green customers. They are smart green customers. So they look at the figures. And if you look at the figures, you will see that the emissions and the energy costs of such a system are roughly 60% lower than comparable systems. And we are not comparing to any old systems, but very modern systems. 
The last half year, we had a few sales here. Um, it's a little overview of what we are selling to. For instance, if we go back to this one, this was a building in Hamburg. Uh, it's a new office building. It was um, important for the investor to have a gold certificate, according to DGNB. DGNB is a German institution for uh, certifying green buildings. And this has a gold standard. Then other, uh, other investors, they were in this half year, there was um, a large corporation who wanted to have their head offices with our system. Then there's a residential system, a clinic, um, even a data center, and luxury residences. How does it work? Uh, what is the value of the system? Normally, if you have a gas boiler and you have 100 units of gas, you would typically have 90 units of heat. If you use a more modern system with a heat pump, you have gas-driven heat pumps, then you would get 150 units of heat, which is already a lot better, and you're using renewable energy uh, in quite a respectable amount. What we did is we made a hybrid system where with 100 units of gas, you can have 210 units, and we're using much more renewable energy. So if you see everything together, you'll see that we have considerable savings of roughly 60% compared to, our, to conventional gas systems. If you look at state-of-the-art coolers, it's a similar story because our system uses only four units of electricity where a state-of-the-art conventional cooler uses roughly 25 units of energy to produce 100 units of cold. That means savings of more than 80%. We have segmented the market by floor space in Germany and to keep things short, you'll see here there we have um, distinguished in commercial buildings, in large residential buildings, and we have a system for special buildings like airports. Um, the investment opportunity that we are offering at the moment is um, for the future because we are looking for a, a rapid expansion in the next two years in, in other countries. At the moment, we have a current investors, which is Indico, which is my own company, eCapital and um, IBB. I think you all know those last two companies. And uh, we have financing to reach break even. Um, and we're looking for funding later on for uh, the rapid expansion. Thank you very much for your attention. I think we need you again for our uh, Smart Green City conference in London, okay. which uh, may uh, help you to tap into the UK market. If you're That's interested, okay. let yes. me know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a question for Peter? Thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, my, my question is, would it also work if we only take out heat in winter and, and don't put down heat in summer? Um, we have this question regularly. Um, it would also work, but not as efficient. Um, we have found ways around it. And for instance, um, if you are only heating or only cooling, uh, that you can boost system performance by, um, for instance, if, if I have this example, if you're heating and you're n you don't want to cool, then you would extract heat every year. Uh, what you could do is kind of thermal regeneration in the summer in that you put uh, wires, it's a little bit like floor heating, uh, which collects sun, uh, the solar energy to regenerate the, the Earth. It costs a little bit more of electricity, but it's still very, um, very efficient. And with the cooling, you could do similar thing. You could do similar things. So that would work, yes. David. <laughs> Uh, double question. Can we have some idea about the investment price? And um, is it possible to install for new building, I suppose, but also for renovated building? Or for yes, existing we, existing building? Building, yeah. we, we do. We, <coughs> we have um, quite a, a nice mixture of installations in existing buildings and in new buildings. For instance, this one that I showed you from Hamburg, um, there was absolutely no space. We built it under the building. Uh, but we also have like old buildings in Berlin where we do retrofit and then we go to one of the very small space behind the building, for instance, or, or in front of the building. Or you could even do it in the cellar of a building uh, to do it there. Uh, that's one part of the question. And sorry, what was the second part? I a cost of investment. Um, well, to give you a, a rough idea, the examples that I showed you there, they are between 60,000 and, and, and 600,000 at, uh, at this moment. 
Um, and um, the amortization depends a lot on um, a lot of external factors, like what is the comparable energy price um, of the different energies you're using. That's why we have gas-powered systems or electricity-powered systems. And um, what is also important, of course, is several subsidies that are there. So it's, uh, I guess your next question <laughs> would have been uh, the amortization time. It uh, varies between um, anything between three to four years to maybe 20 years. Uh, it's a, quite a big range. All right, Peter, thank you very much okay. for coming to Eco Summit and pitching. Thanks for an honor. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>